Hello everyone, good evening. Just doing usual sound check to see if the microphone and everything works while we wait for people to join online. And it works. And we have Vanessa. Good day, Vanessa. Phil is waving. <laughs> uh, isn't this fun? Uh, I have been enjoying this, I must say. If you would have asked me a year ago that I'd be doing videos, I'm a writer, I like to write. Not much for being in front of a camera. Anyway, we will, let's begin while we, as people start joining, I repeat a lot, so I'm quite sure they'll be able to gather what I'm saying. But um, I can see that people are, um, because of the time difference around, around the world, a lot of people are watching videos at different times. So I won't waste any more time. One thing I do want to highlight before we, um, we start talking about met metabolism um, is that the rhythm of breathing is something that you will you will begin to flow with as much time goes by. It's only been, what, six days today? I think this live stream number six. Um, we haven't even touched a week. So you're, if you're all beginners and you're all starting to do this deep breathing, trust me, your main objective is to get into a flow. Now, the difference between allowing yourself to be breathed, basically, is where you get out of the way and you allow the body the belly to expand and you you hold the breath for as long as the body can and then the body decides now I want to just have a satisfying exhale and you allow that as well. So why am I mentioning the word allowing? Because allowing is very different to controlling. If you're trying to control your breath, so you're the one that decides when to inhale, you're the one that decides when to do this and you it's you're, you're, you're sort of deceiving yourself. You're not really controlling it. You just got to let yourself go and just focus on a rhythm. Get a rhythm going. That's how energy moves is through a certain rhythm, okay? That's why a song or a dance always captivates you because there's rhythm in it. And that's how energy actually accelerates, okay? So you need to allow yourself to get into a rhythm, it's really important this. Control needs to be something that stays outside with the mind. Mind and control go hand in hand. By deep breathing, you're actually facilitating your body to feel that flow of energy, to be out of control. When you're out of control, guess what? Things work better. The mind is the only one that's believing it's in control. All right? You don't need control. And this is the priority of deep breathing and even meditating. It is a meditative practice. Deep breathing is a meditative practice, whether you, you know this or not. But by deep breathing and finding a flow and allowing the energy to come in and, and exhale out the toxins, you're, you're benefiting in such a I just like to point out that the control that everyone thinks that it's such an effort to deep breathe. No, no, it's the contrary. There is no effort. It's effortless. It feels like an effort because you haven't done it for decades. Okay? So um, I just wanted to highlight that for a minute um, because I've been getting quite a few comments. Let me just see if... so. You don't need to control anything at all when you're doing this practice, okay? You need to find rhythm in your breathing. Just allow the body to breathe, okay? And this is why it's important to leave your mind out at all times. So 
Um, another thing I just want to point out is that why I discussed emotions so thoroughly yesterday, and I'm going to go into it probably again next week, is that because the more you do breathe, things will come up. You will suddenly feel maybe a, a part of sadness coming up or anxiety, okay? It's not the breathing that's making you sad. It's not the breathing that's making you anxious, Emotions are either trapped in your body or your thoughts are it creating it in that moment, okay, which actually go hand in hand. Your thoughts create fearful, anxious, sad thoughts, and when they come up because you want to suppress them, you don't want to feel them, they remain trapped. So breathing will bring everything to the surface, all right? So your emotions are going to feel a bit more amplified. And I did want to, you know, bring this topic up as, as soon as possible because it's not the breathing that's making you sad, okay? The breathing is trying to release itself from those trapped energies, all right? So when you are feeling anxious and the anxiety comes up, and I had a question that I'm feeling rather anxious, it's hard for me to breathe. Yeah, okay? And if they go hand in hand. Why have you not been breathing properly all these years is because emotions come up. They're not acknowledged. They're not released through your breath. And so now it's harder to breathe because now you've, you, you're, you're really breathing sh in, a, in a shallow way. You, you're futile breathing through the chest and it's really hard to breathe. So in order to breathe well, you need to release emotions. But when emotions come up, it's hard to breathe. It's kind of a catch-22. What do we do? What do we do? So in order to breathe, and you know now how important it is to breathe, you must release these emotions. You have no choice. You've got, you've got to decide, do I hold on to these emotions? You're going to have trouble breathing. And without, tr without breathing properly, your body doesn't receive the oxygen that it deserves, and now things start to shut down, okay? We're starting to hold on to toxins. We're starting to hold on to waste that we're not meant to hold on, all right? It needs to all come out. Your body is a vessel, in and out, in and out, just like the breath, inhale, exhale, okay? No one stays, nothing needs to stay. <clears throat> the perfection of this magnificent, amazing body that we, we have knows how to function perfectly if only you would allow it. So you really need to sit down and contemplate. Do I want to hold on to these emotions? And for what reason? Or are you going to practice releasing them as they come up? So anxiety, for example, anxiety comes up. You should celebrate. The moment you feel any kind of sensation that comes up, it's ready to get out. If it comes up, it's ready to go. There's really no reason to hold on to it. So sit and breathe into it. Acknowledge it. It wants to be acknowledged by you. It no longer wants to be suppressed. These emotions, which is energy in motion, emotions are energy. And today, discussing the metabolism, you're going to see how the energy is created. All right? So emotions are energy in motion. And they want to be released, not suppressed. Suppressing energy, you know what? So when you suppress energy, you sort of confine it in a small space, and now it just wants to be released. Be the allower of the release. Be the allower of the breath. Be the allower of the rhythm. Okay? Okay, I hope I answered that question for you, but if I didn't, please um, um, keep writing. I love it. So I've got some notes here that I really want, would like you to read them after this um, after this video, just so the information can sink in. You can acknowledge it, but I don't want you to hold on to these details. I just want to kind of give you a broader perspective of what this metabolism really is and how people 
sort of use it as, ah, oh, breathing, yeah, okay, fine. But you know what? I, I'm suffering from a very, very slow metabolism. It ain't going to work for me. I kind of put on weight. That is a belief. That is only a thought you've kept th thinking, and now it's a belief, and now that's what you believe. So I'm only going to say these things just to sort of maybe loosen up that concept in you and just allow you to embrace that by breathing deeply you are in control of your metabolism yes there's a lot of chatter out there that says oh it depends on your gender it depends on your age it depends on your uh, hereditary from your family and whatnot that is the least and one of the most smallest statistics ever the majority of what actually makes your metabolism work is all under your control. I'm going to repeat that. It's all under your control. And how? The breath and the metabolism go hand in hand. Oxygen, breathing, metabolism, hand in hand. Without one, you have a slow metabolism. All right? So this is why it's important just to Wrap. Now, I'm just going to give you some information. I haven't got into deep because I really don't want you to hang on to concepts. I don't want you to hang on to descriptions. just want you to ease yourself into this so you just want to bring it home a little bit more that how important it is to find a rhythm in deep conscious breathing. All right? So did you know that metabolism is nothing but a form of measurement of how much oxygen your body expends while making energy. It is a form of measurement, okay? Metabolism is how much oxygen your body is using, expending in order to make energy. Remember, it uses the food and liquids, to, and it processes it, and it converts it into energy, okay? When you've got food, and liquids coming in, without the oxygen, it cannot be processed, processed and broken down into energy. So then the, the foods get stored as fats, and even the water. Water, H2O, is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. If you're not giving them as much um, oxygen, hydrogen then gets conver converted into fat. I didn't know that. Blew me away. All right. You need oxygen to process that, process food and process water in order to have and create energy. And the measurement of how much oxygen is, is actually being processed into energy is what we call, the rate of it is what we call metabolism. Okay. So is it not logical then that the more oxygen you give your body, the higher your metabolism is going to be? Okay, settle with that. So your body needs oxygen to create energy. And the rate at which your body produces energy is your metabolism. The rate at which your body produces the energy is what is called, is what is called metabolism. So the less oxygen you allow into your body, the rate's going to be slower. All right? So with... A constant and a consistent flow of remembering just to take in deep breaths whenever you can. All right. You are now assisting. You're in control now. You're assisting your metabolism to keep that consistent flow. So when foods and liquids do come in or if you've had a party and you've overdone it a bit, it knows what to do. All right. It knows what to do. So your body needs oxygen to create energy. And the rate in which your body produces energy is the metabolism. So the average person, the average person's body needs, takes 4.8 calories. I'm going to give you some details. You probably won't remember this, but just to sort of, you know, give you a broader perspective. The average person's body takes 4 to 8, 4.8 calories to burn one liter of oxygen to create energy. All right. So 4.8 calories to burn one liter of oxygen. If you don't have any oxygen there, nothing's going to burn into energy. What's the calories going to do? I ask myself. So 75% of the energy that is produced, okay, 
goes towards your general maintenance of the body. So is this not making, this is just what's exciting to me. I mean, I've obviously narrowed it down this information into little um, conversational uh, tips here. But just to, I mean, in my mind, it's all like, so in order to have energy in your body, you need oxygen, okay? Without the oxygen, you cannot have the energy. But you need 75 the 75% of your energy goes towards maintenance of your whole entire system. And I haven't even mentioned, I haven't even scraped the surface of it. I mean, I've been, we've been talking about, you know, your waist, uh, the nerves and the livers and the stuff, but there's just so much more. I mean, I don't have a degree, but I've been reading into this and every single day I am blown away of how, the prime root cause of all this energy and clarity that we have to allow this body to function all comes down to that one factor is I must breathe consistently every single day because my body can store anything, as you can see, apart from oxygen. It is something I need to always give it. And as I said in, the, in past videos, again, I repeat, Energy, oxygen is always available to you consistently. It's for free at any time. You don't have to go anywhere to buy it. Okay? Deep breathing. So 75% of the energy that's created in your body through deep breathing, your metabolism, processing foods, goes towards the general maintenance of your body. 75%. All right? So... Metabolism is the rate at which the body runs your brain, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, and even that which grows your fingernails, all right? So just to give you some, some more information. Now, the metabolism is the rate at which the oxygen burns and creates energy, all right? Breathing is the key to warming <clears throat> and waking up your metabolism. So... In order, if you if you believe and you know that you've been diagnosed with a very slow metabolism, breathing will wake it up and warm it up. What does that mean? When you breathe in more oxygen, the first thing that happens, okay, there's quite a few things that that sort of happen to speed up your metabolism. First of all, heat, okay, heat rises up in your body. Obviously, oxygen that creates energy heats it up. All right. Now the heat, the more the heat there is, your cells become more pliable. Okay. They're less rigid. They move with more ease and flexibility. Okay. They begin to open up and they allow more space for the intercellular fluids to circulate. You need movement. You need space. All right. When you don't have oxygen, everything's more rigid. Everything's more compact. All right. So it is important for it to just... Again, easy. you need to feel ease so then your cells can feel ease. They can relax. Everything needs to be relaxed. Have you noticed that everything that we discuss, it's always towards peace, ease, effortlessness in order to function. We have this thing, we have this concept that everything needs to be difficult and controlled and pushed and shoved in order to make things happen. It really is the contrary, and, you know. So this is really important for you to just to digest and just to see, have I been doing everything the other way around all my life? Hmm. In order to breathe with a certain rhythm, I must be calm. And in order to be calm, and so oxygen can go in and do all of these wonderful things, calmness is the key. Oxygen is the effect. All right? So they become better at bringing in nutrients, okay, your, your, your cells, once they heat up a bit, they become better at bringing in nutrients and getting rid of toxins. Bringing in nutrients, getting rid of toxins. So you need that heat, energy, heat, oxygen. All right? Heat detoxifies the, or the organs and tissues and revitalizes the entire system. Without heat, it can't be done. And heat 
energy, oxygen. All right. So every day your body needs energy to burn through 700 billion old cells. These old cells are toxics and must be removed from your body. If not, what happens? They just linger around and have a party inside, but they, then they demand a lot of energy. They demand a lot of energy that if you didn't have those toxic wastes inside of you, that energy, that energy could be dedicated to processing um, food and liquid and creating more energy, okay, and eliminating waste. So it is imperative. Number two, by breathing deeper and you promote better circulation of body fluids within your kidneys, your stomach, your liver, and your intestines. So the metabolism creates more heat, but also promotes a better circulation. Circulation of body fluids, and not only of that, okay, it also promotes a good flow of blood. If you don't have a good flow of blood, it starts to become sluggish. So now you're, it's, the blood basically is supposed to bring oxygen to different parts of your body. So circulation of fluids and of blood. If not, you are literally one-handedly strangling all of your cells. And last but not least that I really want to mention, okay, is your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is literally your cleansing tool. It's where what we'd call the sewage. It really needs to work properly without the lymphatic system it can't take care of the waste. And 700 billion cells in your body every day, we need good waste ma management, all right? We really, really need good waste management. The lymphatic system needs to work properly. It cannot fail. 700 billion old cells every day, all right? So I didn't want, my intention of this video was not to frighten you, but kind of give you an idea. I had no idea what was happening inside of me. Um, and now getting into details, it sort of bridges those little gaps. Why do I need to breathe? And I realized when I started meditating about six years ago that uh, my body did feel more energetic, but it, it didn't really realize. I, I would only breathe deeply while I was meditating. And then during the day, obviously, I'd get into you know, the daily routine of things. But since I've come back from the United States and I stumbled across this book, I have now been more aware of when I can just fill in, you know, a breath here and my breathing exercise and whatnot. And another thing I've realized that I have a clearer connection with my body. My body speaks to me. It actually tells me what it feels like and what it doesn't feel like anymore. For some reason now, um, this um, desire of not wanting to eat meat. Like I didn't make a decision. I wasn't talked into it. I don't have any beliefs or sort of concerns around it. It's just all of a sudden spontaneous action was, I don't feel like eating meat anymore. It's, it, it's sort of the more oxygen, the more energy, the body, you seem to have a connection with your body in a way that I've never had before. Uh, another thing that's come up since I came back from the States is that I feel very, very heavy when I have any kind of dairy. And now all of a sudden I'm not, I'm not prone to dairy. Was it a, a, a conscious decision? No, I don't remember deciding it. It's just that I don't feel drawn. But if we go out for a cappuccino somewhere, I don't say, oh, no, I don't have dairy. I'll have it, all right, um, if I feel like it. But... The, the majority, I used to drink and eat a lot of cheese, uh, drink a lot of milk. So all of a sudden that's gone. But I, it wasn't an effort. It wasn't something I had to uh, convince myself and go on any particular diet. It was effortless. This was my experience. You will have all your experiences and see. But it makes perfect sense. If you understand that everything is energy and how oxygen is creating that energy, Energy is measured through frequency, okay? So the higher the frequency, you know, like in music and tunes, the higher the frequency, the lighter it is, all right? So the, more, the lighter you feel with more oxygen and burning, you will be now a, 
like a magnet, you'll be attracted to this, those sort of same frequencies. Everything is connected. And I'll show you how next week, how we're all being attracted by frequencies. And the more oxygen you allow yourself to breathe in and out, and so your body can now function properly and correctly, you'll be prone to higher frequencies. You'll be attracted by higher frequencies. Okay? People that are of a higher frequency. So you'll be in interacting with happier and more lighthearted people. All right? Foods of the same sort of degree, situations and scenarios of that. We are all energy. And that's what oxygen needs to produce in your body is energy. Without it, you will always feel lethargic, heavy, and because your your waste, your your waste system's not working properly, they'll all be living inside of you. It is imperative that we understand that. Don't give up. I know the first week was hard, probably. Now we're going into the second week. Do not give up. It will become effortless. It will become a flow, a rhythm. You'll feel so much more energetic. Please do not give up. I know the first three weeks are the hardest. And that's why I've dedicated and made a commitment that for 21 days, I will stand by your side and I will be here as a reminder every single day. I will show up and motivate you and inspire you not to give up. Keep breathing. It will get easier. You will feel happier. You will feel lighter. And I will keep giving you some sort of details about the functions of the body just to allow your mind to stay at ease. Oh, that makes perfect sense, your mind will say, and it will leave you alone. All right? It's, it's, this information is more to ease your mind, not to start debating and reconstructing. In fact, I haven't given you a whole lesson, okay, from the medical book from Wikipedia, because that's, this is not my intention. My intention is to ease your mind so then you can get on with it. Do you know what I mean? So um, that's all I really wanted to um, talk to you about uh, regarding the metabolism. Your metabolism is completely in your control, all right? It is completely in your control. Uh, if you'd like to read up more about it, and um, I can send you some links, but really don't try and accumulate more information. Just know that your metabolism is the rate with which you burn oxygen to create energy. And I think just knowing that is more than enough. Um, you can get it to warm up and speed up without a problem. But again, with ease, okay? Um, I had promised you three exercises that I do, I normally do on my, on my daily uh, routine. Uh, one was what we call the ratio one, four, and two. Um, and if that's a bit too much for you, you can do one, uh, and three. So basically you, you breathe in for a count of three and you hold four times as much and then you exhale. I do that at least uh, once a day in the morning. Just before lunch, I do that Kung Fu, which I was um, talking to you about yesterday, which well, watch, watch some YouTube videos, you know, the karate that takes in a deep breath and ha, I don't want to yell, but it really helps to, to release those belly muscles. And I do about three or four of them just before um, lunch. Then after I've eaten, I enjoy my four by four breathings. I just take in a few breaths there as well. Um, one thing I like doing, Marie and I like, like going on walks every morning. Um, Marie's an expert. She knows how to breathe through her nose effortlessly. I, on the other hand, can breathe in through, I had the habit of breathing through my mouth and wasn't really aware of it. So what helped me is another exercise I found in the book is I take a sip of water and I hold it in my mouth and just walk. Okay, no, no inhaling or anything like that. I just walk. And then I sort of make myself aware, okay. That's just kind of helps you to get into the rhythm of breathing through your nose. And there's a particular reason why it's easier to, it, the breathing exercises always 
inhaling through the nose because you have filters and there's more moisture and it sort of protects you from bacteria. Whereas breathing from your mouth, everything just goes in. So the inhale is always important through the nose and the exhale can either be through the nose or through the mouth, depending on the exercises I'll be sharing with you. I have another about 10 different types of exercises which I'll be sharing with you in the second, third week. As you become comfortable, belly breathing, deep, conscious daily, mm, belly breathing. So let me just see if anyone's asked any questions. Okay. Thank you so much for all your beautiful comments. I really appreciate that. If there's anything, um, as that one question of the anxiety coming up, if there's anything you'd like me to introduce in, in the daily videos, please let me know. Just send me a message or, or in the comment here. I don't mind. I don't have a conversation set in stone. Um, whatever comes to mind, I'd like to share. Um, so I will see you again here tomorrow at the same time. And I hope you really get into this appreciation of what this wonderful thing called oxygen can do for us physically, mentally, and also for our soul. It is the one thing that I appreciate much more since I have been doing these breathing exercises is the utter appreciation for this magnificent body that just allows everything to happen. It takes care of things I don't need to think about. And what I need to think about is just how to be present in the moment, joyful, loving towards myself, and everyone around me. That's your only job. Breathe and just be present to whatever experience comes up and let your body take care of the rest. But give it the prime ingredient, oxygen. I love you all so very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao.